Uh, in this video we can look at to read and write data to a file in node red and we can look at reading and writing um, text uh, JSON and uh, CSV data to the to a file. Now to illustrate that I'm going to use this uh, flow here and I'll make this flow available on the downloads page and we're using the file storage object and you can find it under the storage category and there's the file input and there's the file output so this reads data from a file and this sends data to a file here so you just drag and drop them into here into the onto the canvas so we start out with the writing and now node is event based so we need to trigger it and I'm using the inject node to trigger the write so let's take a look at the file node that I've configured and we configure it a file to write to this is the file name and I've decided to append to the file I could write to the file and I could delete the file and add a new line to each payload because I'm sending text data to it and I'll create a directory if it's not already present and the name is optional if I don't use the name here it defaults to the the file name which you can see it when I go back to the canvas so very simple there's very little configuration to be done there cancel now it's already been deployed so I don't need to deploy it again so if I just inject then it should write a line which is the timestamp into into this file so successfully injected timestamp now to verify that I need to go over to that file and I need to read that file now before I do that I've got another configuration here again I'm injecting a timestamp and this time I'm actually going to delete the file so if I look at the file object here then I'm going to delete the file so let me go and have a look at the file as it exists now on on my Raspberry Pi so here's the file here test.log and I'm just going to start it off by deleting that file so let's go back to here and I just click on this and it should delete the file I go back to my Raspberry Pi and you can see it's been deleted now let's go back again now this time we write to the file so we inject our timestamp into the file it's done and let's go back again to and you can see it's created the log and if I open up the log very little in there it's just a timestamp if you can actually read that there there's the timestamp which is what we expect that was simple text data now we're going to look at uh, writing CSV formatted data and JSON formatted data to a file now again I'm going to use the inject node in reality you wouldn't be using this you'd be using a, a data source and I'll be doing a video on using MQTT as the data source and login sensor data to a file in JSON and uh, CSV format okay so here we've got our inject node and it's going to send this time it's going to send a message called test message and it's going to send a topic test topic now if you look at the CSV and we look at the info on here it converts between a CSV formatted string and a JavaScript object so what we need here to put into here is a JavaScript object and out of it comes a CSV string and if I look at the JSON node it basically the same thing it takes it converts between a JSON string and a JavaScript object so the input to both of these nodes needs to be a JavaScript object and that is the purpose of this function here this is a function node and this node here and the function node basically creates a JavaScript object so let's have a look at the function node so this is a function node and all I do is I create a timestamp and then I use that timestamp to form part of the JavaScript object so I create the payload and it consists of the time it consists of the message and it consists of the the topic so it takes the message and the topic from the inject node and it adds uh, a time to it a timestamp from using this bit here now an option to convert it to JSON I'm not going to use that I'm going to use the JSON node I've commented it out 
and we assign the payload back to the message payload and here another option where I set the message file name and I'll show you that later on and then we just simply return the message okay so all this the purpose of this at the moment is to create a JSON sorry is to create a JavaScript object so done so we inject the topic we inject the message into this it forms a JavaScript object and then we put it into the CSV node and the CSV node then logs it to the file and this is the same as this here, it's just a copy. Okay, so let's do it. Inject and we'll do it a couple of times and now let's have go and have a look at the, the file. So this is the file here, you can see it consists of the topic the message and the timestamp and I did it twice so we got two entries here and they're separated by commas this is in CSV format. Now to do it in uh, JSON format I just remove that one there and I wire this one in and then we deploy it and we use the inject node again and we'll again do it twice and let's go and have a look and here it is here you can see I did it twice there's the first one there and there's the second one and there isn't a new line character I can rectify that now the reason there wasn't a new line character is because I removed it from the the file object or sorry the file node and so with JSON I need to put it in there with the CSV it adds it automatically. Okay so that's how to write data to to a file in, in JSON format or CSV format or in text format. Now to read data from the file we use the file input node and again we need to trigger it so I'm using an inject node I'm just injecting the timestamp it's irrelevant what I inject in there it's just to trigger this to read the file and I'm reading the the log file that I created and I'm just sending it off to the debug node so we can see it and if I look at the file input node you can see I'm reading a message per line and I'm reading it from this file here cancel and if I look at the function node you can see it's just returning the message this line's commented out and I, I'm going to go back to this in a second once we've seen the the read okay let's deploy it and look at the debug and now we inject and we see the contents of our file here you can, that's what the last thing I created there's the JSON encoded data now it reads the entire file if you wanted to go through this line by line you would have to do that in the function you would have to um, pass the contents of this into a function and separate the the lines out and I'm not going to do that in this video now let's go back to this one here and this line here now on both the read and the write we actually specified the name of the file in the the file node or the file output node or the file input node now what happens if we want to programmatically programmatically create the file name well we can do that and this time we what we need to do is we need a function and we need to pass on the file name as part of the message object so here I'm setting the message.file name to this here now this is sensors.text and if I show you over on my my Raspberry Pi I've actually got a file called sensors.text and it's got some data into it and let's do that and I go to this one now and I remove the file name from there so it just says file so now what this should do now is it should read from the test Dot log file it should read from the sensors.txt file so let me deploy it and I'll leave this showing in the screen here you can see that was the last thing it read now let me just trigger it and there it read the 
file there. You can see the data is completely different. And again, if I wanted to write data to a different file name other than that, what I'd do is I'd remove that, delete that. I'm not going to delete it, just show you. And then I would go to the message, or sorry, the, the function, and I would set the file name there. I'm just going to cancel that. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I've demonstrated it here. So that's how to read and write data to a, a file uh, in CSV format and in JSON format, and also how to modify the, the file name. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you've got any comments on the video, then you can leave them below. If you like the video, then you can use the like button below. And if you'd like to be notified of new videos on the channel, you can always subscribe to the channel. If you do use so social media and you f think it'd be useful to your um, followers on social media, then you can always share it on social media as well. Okay, until next time, goodbye.